Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are talking about a new initiative from OpenAI that is meant to help make it so that AI doesn't take over the world. Over the past few months, concerned around AI safety, and in particular, the extinction risk or existential risk that comes from a super intelligent AI or an advanced general intelligence have really rocketed into mainstream consciousness. One of the big drivers of this has been Jeffrey Hinton. At the beginning of May, the New York Times published this piece called The Godfather of AI Leaves Google and Warns of Danger Ahead. Now, the idea that someone could be ludicrously well compensated as someone at Google is and still leave and effectively turn one's back on their entire lifetime of research and work has really captured people's attention and put the spotlight on these questions of AI risk. Now, when it comes to AI risk, part of the way that people in the space try to address or think about it is what they call alignment. In other words, aligning AI with human values. The presumption is that an advanced general intelligence wouldn't necessarily share human values a priori. And so in order to avoid the various scenarios that end up with AI exterminating the human race in one way or another, we need to figure out ways to align advanced AIs with our own societal norms and values. The problem historically has been that there is far less time, energy, compute, and other resources dedicated to alignment than there is to advancing AI capabilities. This makes sense in the context of our market system, which is going to reward people more for their advances in capabilities than it is for their advances in alignment, but that gap has been hugely problematic, and part of the reason why AI doomers are so, so scared. It was notable then yesterday when OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT and pretty much the most influential company in the space, published a blog post called Introducing Super Alignment. The lead of the post reads, We need scientific and technical breakthroughs to steer and control AI systems much smarter than us. To solve this problem within four years, we're starting a new team co-led by Ilya Sutskever and Jan Lakey, and dedicating 20% of the compute we've secured to date to this effort. The post begins, Superintelligence will be the most impactful technology humanity has ever invented, and could help us solve many of the world's most important problems. But the vast power of superintelligence could also be very dangerous, and could lead to the disempowerment of humanity or even human extinction. While superintelligence seems far off now, we believe it could arrive this decade. Managing these risks will require, among other things, new institutions for governance and solving the problem of superintelligence alignment. In other words, how do we ensure AI systems much smarter than humans follow human intent? Currently, we don't have a solution for steering or controlling a potentially superintelligent AI and preventing it from going rogue. Our current technologies for aligning AI, such as reinforcement learning from human feedback, rely on humans' ability to supervise AI. But humans won't be able to reliably supervise AI systems much smarter than us, and so our current alignment techniques will not scale to superintelligence. We need new scientific and technical breakthroughs. So there is a lot here just in this first section. One, once again, OpenAI notes that the extreme possibility of human extinction is real. I've said it before and I'll say it again that it is quite significant that the leading company in this space speaks so openly about that risk. It's exactly the type of thing that in most historical context a company would try to tamp down or even malign and castigate as crazy. A second interesting thing about this opening is what OpenAI's sense of timeline is. They believe, they say, that superintelligence could arrive this decade. Given that historically, people's estimates of how fast AI was going to develop have been off but in the other direction, as in AI has developed much faster than they thought, this prediction that superintelligence could be here before 2030 is super, super notable. Finally, this acknowledgement that today's techniques are not sufficient is put really plainly and really clearly. There is an acknowledgement from OpenAI that in the context of a superintelligent AI that is smarter than us, we simply won't be able to monitor it like a zealous parent would. So to me, right from the beginning, it's clear that there is a serious level of intent behind this new initiative. So what is OpenAI's approach going to be? They write, Our goal is to build a roughly human-level automated alignment researcher. We can then use vast amounts of compute to scale our efforts and iteratively align superintelligence. To align the first automated alignment researcher, we will need to 1. Develop a scalable training method, 2. Validate the resulting model, and 3. Stress test our entire alignment pipeline. They also say that they're expecting their research priorities will evolve substantially as we learn about the problem, and so this solution is not necessarily the one that they'll end up with, but it is where they are starting. From there, they get into the resources that they're going to dedicate to this. First of all, it's a new team, and it's being led by their chief scientist and a co-founder of the company. More than that, however, is the announcement that they're dedicating a fifth of the compute that they've secured to solving this particular problem. Now, you may say a fifth isn't all that much, but to put it in context, OpenAI has had to delay features this year because they simply don't have enough compute to push them forward. 
They had intended, for example, to release a multimodal version of ChatGPT, and it appears that that's just not going to be possible because of lack of access to compute. So to take 20% of that and move it away from non-commercial resources is not an insignificant move. Still, maybe the most notable thing about this is the moonshot nature of it. OpenAI writes, our goal is to solve the core technical challenges of superintelligence alignment in four years. Going from something we have no idea how to do to actually solving it in four years is an incredibly, incredibly ambitious goal. And this is absolutely something that people in the community have taken note of. And I think that's a good segue to start talking about what people in the community actually think about this. Let's start with the AI safety community, who are the folks who are most likely to be skeptical of it. Zvi Mauschewitz, who's one of the best writers on AI safety right now, sent out a Twitter poll saying, if your top priority is AI not killing everyone, joining the OpenAI Superintelligence Alignment team is, the options he listed were a great play, a good play, about neutral, or an actively bad idea. In reverse order, of the 500 plus voters, 12.7% said an actively bad idea, 19.1% said about neutral, 38.2% said a good play, and 30% said a great play. So almost a third of people think that this would be a great approach for someone who wanted to focus on eliminating AI X risk. And overall, about two thirds of people thought that it was a great or good play. Eliezer Yudkowsky initially had concerns that there was a disparity between how the people who were focusing on the alignment side of things were being compensated as compared to those who were focused on the capability side, tweeting, Based on previous reports that a typical ML person at OpenAI earns $930,000 per year, it looks like you're planning to pay alignment people one-fourth to one-third. What capabilities people earn at OpenAI? Am I in error? To that, a researcher at OpenAI said, you are. The alignment research scientist role page says the annual salary range for this role is $245,000 to $450,000. The generic research scientist role page says the annual salary range for this role is $200,000 to $370,000. To that, Eliezer said, okay, I'm temporarily relieved. And even tweeted out, I'm in error. Yay. Daniel Eth writes, glad they're not dancing around this issue or using euphemisms here. As an aside, super alignment sounds like trying to align superheroes, which makes me think of the TV show The Boys. It's a goofy term, but one that seems hard to co-opt or water down. And maybe the most telling response to me comes from Laron Shapira, who wrote, hot take, that's awesome. More than I was expecting and more than any competitor is doing. Now, most importantly, Liron points out, they didn't have to make themselves vulnerable to accusations of failing to meet the standard they set for themselves, but they did. And what he's talking about is what it means to set this four-year goal. In the absence of a four-year goal, in the absence of identifying a percentage of compute that's being used for this, it would be easy for this to be a sort of corporate philanthropy type effort that is ultimately greenwashing or just some PR focused thing. By announcing that they're using 20% of their compute for this goal, and by announcing their goal of four years, those are benchmarks that people can measure against to see how OpenAI is doing at its own initiative. Now, of course, this isn't to say that there is some skepticism. Autism Capital writes, OpenAI owning alignment research is like the cigarette companies owning cancer research. TK Rengrenagen writes, OpenAI has no incentive to avoid even known downsides of the AI tech they create. The super alignment is simply a checkbox feint to avoid regulations. Maybe more middle of the road, Rohit asks, practically, does OpenAI's announcement about super alignment meaningfully change anything from what they were already doing before? 19.3% said yes, 60.6% .6 said no, 20.1% said a secret third thing. For what it's worth, I am definitely in the yes column on this question. I think that putting a co-founder and chief scientist on a team that is going to have access to a fifth of the compute resources of a company, where compute resources are inevitably and inexorably scarce, and where there is a four-year moonshot goal for one of the hardest problems in the world, is significantly different than just having a bunch of people who focus on alignment kicking around the office. Now, from the less cynical side, a lot of people recognized that moonshot nature of this and appreciated the ambition behind it. Riley Goodside, who was featured on that Cognitive Revolution episode that we had on our feed a few weeks back, wrote, A statement of purpose in giant font toward an ambition like no other. Meanwhile, others like Dr. Jim Fan from NVIDIA are jumping in with their own ideas already. He writes, OpenAI's alignment strategy says that humans won't be able to reliably supervise AI systems much smarter than us but I think we can move humans up the supervision chain, i.e. feedback to feedback. He then gives an example of writing malware and how a human system could be redesigned to have humans be able to supervise much better than they could today. Now, what about the wisdom of the crowds? On manifold markets, there are a number of prediction markets around this particular issue now. One of them asks, will OpenAI's super alignment project produce a significant breakthrough in alignment research before 2027, which currently stands at a 62% chance of yes. Now, when the question was asked a little bit more concretely, i.e. not just a generally important breakthrough, but actually achieving the goal of super alignment, the confidence interval was a bit lower. 
Victor Lee created a prediction market. Will the OpenAI super alignment team believe that their goal has been achieved after four years? And only 26% say yes. Now, of course, the big question that overhangs is what happens if the alignment team gets to the end of four years and hasn't made the breakthroughs that they want? What happens if instead they've convinced themselves that there aren't good ways to align superintelligence? Nathan Young on Twitter asks, Will OpenAI stop developing AGI if their alignment team is pessimistic in four years? I think that's a really good question to ask and one that's worth having discussions about now. You have to think that OpenAI is having some of those conversations, but ultimately I'm sure they're going to reserve judgment until they're actually able to make some progress on this challenge. Now, I definitely find myself in the optimistic camp around this. Not optimistic in the sense that I'm convinced that in four years we can solve alignment to superintelligence, but optimistic in the sense that this is a serious effort at it. It's an attempt to align their company at least around a moonshot goal, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is influential in how other companies have to follow suit as relates to some of these issues. Anyways, I am interested to know what you guys think. Do you have that cynical take on this, that this is just for PR or an ability to avoid regulations? Are you less cynical about the intention, but skeptical of the capacity to actually make progress? Do you think that an even broader effort is needed, and if so, what do we do to encourage it? I think if nothing else, this is a good moment to ask those questions. So hit me up in the comments, come join me on Twitter, and let's have the super alignment conversation. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. If you enjoyed it, go share this episode with one person who you think would be interested in these issues. I'd love to have them join the community as well. Until next time, guys. Peace.